Good morning. Welcome to Entrepreneur Country TV. I'm Julie Meyer, the founder of Entrepreneur Country. Delighted to share with you these broadcasts from Malta to the world. What's happening in the world, in business and society, as the world gets remade by entrepreneurs, bringing new digital business models, transforming the world into a world which is driven by ecosystems and platforms. We're delighted to have your feedback. We want you to subscribe and be part of the community to share these broadcasts with us. The Internet of Things. Wow, just imagine by 2020, 30 billion devices connected to the Internet. $265 billion of new revenue services generated. What a wonderful world we're going to live in. Consumers will be empowered. Businesses will be transformed. That's just incredible. If we just rewind four weeks ago, in the UK, there was a slight cyber attack, which resulted in 97% of the National Health Authority coming to Grounding Hall. What I'd like to do is really welcome on board Richard, because when I met Richard, Richard Paris is the chairman, founder, and CEO of Interseed. Richard was introduced to us 15, 16 months ago by a gentleman called Ian Drew, who was the chief marketing officer at Arm. And within 30 seconds of meeting him, I said, wow, this gentleman epitomizes what Julie refers to, which is, don't go to Palo Alto, go to entrepreneur country. And why do I say that? Everybody thinks about the US and Silicon Valley being the leader in tech. Well, where we have with Richard, Richard founded Interseed, and he is only one of two suppliers for cybersecurity to the US federal government. So here's a perfect example of how entrepreneurs in Europe are really leading the way. How do you know if people are who they say they are? Having security flash check picture IDs is quick and easy, but not secure. A more secure route is to check people using smart digital ID cards to verify their identity. But how can you confirm the identity of visitors arriving at your offices? And how do you handle remote sites? Interseed has developed an elegant solution that securely verifies a user's identity anywhere, anytime. It's called the My ID Card Checker. Whether it's an employee or visitor arriving at one of your locations, or providing temporary access to suppliers at one of your facilities, you can use their ID card to verify that they are who they say they are. The visitor enters their PIN number, unlocking the electronic data and fingerprint information on the card allowing you to quickly and easily check their visual identity and verify their fingerprint. And it can all take place anywhere, anytime. The great businesses of the world have all been built on a vision. And the bigger the vision, it seems to be, the better. So, when I started Interseed, the vision I started with was that every company in the world would be trading electronically. Uh, and this is going back 25 years. Uh, I'd like to describe Interseed as a 25-year-old startup company. Uh, that went through an evolution, I think, as most businesses do, uh, from electronic commerce to actually that was too big a problem for me to solve with an initial uh, outlay of 5,000 pounds. Maybe computer security was actually the key thing that was missing. Meet Sam. Sam works in corporate finance at Global Co. He walks to work checking his email and daily schedule on his phone using his Global Co username and password. Once he arrives, he uses the same login details on his computer to check financial data, review customers' accounts and other corporate finance stuff. Come lunchtime, Sam takes his tablet to the cafe to catch up on email and social media. All this online activity is secured by Sam's password, the same one that's recognized and trusted by Global Co's network. But what if Sam isn't really Sam at all? What if he's really an imposter, a cyber criminal, using the real Sam's credentials to steal data from Global Co's network? Who would know until it's too late? The problem is we're so used to thinking that usernames and passwords are reliable trusted identities, but they're not. They're simply a proxy for an identity. 
and not a very good one at that. They're compromised each and every day, we forget them and we reuse them across multiple systems and they fall into evil hands via phishing scams and other nasty methods. So now, Sam, Globalco and its customers are in deep trouble. How do you establish trust in the connected world? It seems to me that trust is one of the most fundamental aspects of humanity. Yet, 50, 60 years after the invention of the computer, you know, 20, 30 years after the internet first came alive, we still struggle big time to actually establish trust in the connected world. And the world of IoT just multiplies that several fold. So what Interseed is about, at essence, is delivering the vision of how do we establish trust in the connected world. The whole world is clearly going to be connected. Our lives are going to be transformed that by that connectivity. And without trust, we have nothing. So that's Interseed has been delivering cybersecurity software solutions to US and UK governments and large enterprises for over 20 years. Our software products and technology are now coming of age with our innovations for mobile security and we've been working with partners in new and exciting areas such as Bitcoin, electronic commerce, secure voice, mobile device management and so much more. So Interseed's MyTam service is leading the way in enabling Android application developers to develop applications that are secure, that protect their applications away from malware provided by hackers and it helps consumers give them peace of mind to protect their assets and their valuable information from cyber criminals. So Rivets has selected the Interseed MyTAM service to provide provisioning of the advanced security capabilities that are available in modern smartphones. The trusted execution environment enables us to secure our application for our customers. And we needed a simple cloud service to deploy this capability. So we use the MyTAM service to deliver both our initial keys to our application in the trusted execution environment and we provide tools that any app developer can use to incorporate these capabilities into their app. And some of our initial applications are in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency spaces. Rivets is leveraging the trusted execution environment in modern smartphones to provide isolated execution for our application from the primary operating system. This allows us to both protect keys and process data on those keys in a manner where malware on the Android operating system cannot affect the process or the security. So the Interseed journey, in particular Mark's comment last uh, the, yesterday morning, first thing, 99, 2000, internet bubble and crash. You were the last company to come to market on London. How was that journey for you? Yeah, so I, I think uh, most entrepreneurs who've succeeded will tell you how difficult life has been. So we didn't raise any money for the first six years. The first money I raised was from a, a VC who within six months decided to run for the hills just before we got to the dot-com bubble. Uh, and they gave me six weeks to find a new investor, to find a million pounds or call in the liquidator. Uh, I was very fortunate. I found a gentleman who was a high net worth who supported me through that time. And with his encouragement, uh, we saw the dot-com boom coming. We geared up into C2 IPO. Uh, we started in probably the March of 2000. Uh, we were scheduled to IPO in November. The bubble burst. All of a sudden, crashing market. We'd spent probably a million pounds on fees. Uh, we had a distressed IPO. So really hard lessons. But actually, that was probably the making of the company because we only raised, would you believe, two million pounds, which was probably, you know, we were being forecast to raise about 50 or 60 at the time. So we had no money to spend on anything. And what it made us do was listen to customers and to have our customers pay for our research and development. And there's no harder lesson than listen to your customers and make sure what you develop meets a real customer need. And in the whole lifetime of the company, up until December last year, we'd only ever raised seven and a half million pounds. Yet at, at the peak of the market, we had a market cap of 100 million. 
Uh, I suppose to an extent the success of Interseed in the US market where we now get about 80% of our revenues, sadly in a way, was actually September 11, when uh, the FBI went to the hijackers' homes uh, after the attack, they found lots of forged US government identity cards. That led to a presidential directive that said every federal employee was going to have their identity revalidated. And on the back of that, an ID card, a cryptographic smart card would be issued. Uh, NIST was charged to come up with a federal standard. The GSA was uh, charged with coming up with an approved product list. And Interseed was the first company to have our product accredited. Now, the reason we were able to do that was because smart cards had no real market in the US before that time. Smart cards were invented in France. We rode that wave out of the UK. We have very specific expertise that none of the US IT majors had. So we were able to produce a platform that we then OEM'd, white labeled, into most of the US uh, security majors, companies like RSA and Verisign and, and, and several others, and then use them to sell into government agencies. At that point, I only had one person, an expat Brit, working out of his bedroom in Virginia, yet we managed to sell to 30% of the US federal government. We're in 13 federal agencies, biggest ones being uh, Social Security Administration and Federal Aviation, uh, going all the way down to some smaller executive offices. So it's really a, a lesson in, in being targeted and being focused, but understanding what your true global USP is. As we come back to the future of in, Internet of Things, 30 billion devices you know, connected to, to the Internet. How are you looking to scale your business? Because you've forged some fantastic strategic partnerships. Julie refers to the whole David and Goliath uh, must dance. You're embracing that dance with some pretty impressive global giants, such as Intel, Arm, Qualcomm. Yeah, so one of the things that attracted me to, to Ariadne was the focus you have on ecosystems. Um, and I'll go back to how I started saying I was trained to look for the for essence in complexity. If you look at IoT, you're talking about uh, potentially millions of apps and devices and operating systems and standards. It's a hugely, hugely complicated space to be in. And I think most companies, whether you're a user of the tech or a supplier into it, struggle to, to, to see the way through that complexity. But I'll give you a secret. There's probably only three or four companies in the world that, that design the silicon that is going to underpin every one of those devices and applications. And those three or four companies have all built, let's call them security enclaves, by design into their silicon so that silicon can be used in a secure way. And everybody who's building apps and service providers in essence, need to get access to those secure enclaves to deliver secure experiences to their, to their customers. So Interseed's vision on the world is if we can work uh, and put those three or four silicon manufacturers at the center of our ecosystems, and if we can then build apps that the people who are building, oh, sorry, APIs, that the people who are building apps for the cloud can then easily embed such that they don't have to become cybersecurity experts, then we can bridge from the silicon to, the, to, to services in a very fast, elegant fashion that cuts through uh, at a, in a moment the fact that actually cybersecurity is probably the biggest threat in the world, uh, in the connected world, and there just aren't enough cybersecurity experts to go round to fix the problems. So if you can fix that with a small number of APIs you can embed and they take away the security pain and you can bridge into the handful of uh, silicon designs, then I think you've actually boiled the, the ocean of complexity down. And that's the interseed story.
So that brings us to the end of Entrepreneur Country TV once again. Thanks so much for tuning in. We really want this to be your channel, your way of consuming and understanding what the future offers for you, how you can play into the building of Entrepreneur Country, that over-the-top solution which is bringing you the future and enabling you to pull down tools, develop formats, contribute and benefit from this new digital future. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.